What's going on everybody, C4, welcome back to the channel, and today we are here for the final, put a little asterisk next to that, Madden 22 Realistic Rebuild. This is our final team, we've done all 32 teams once we're finished with the Philadelphia Eagles. The reason why the Eagles were at the end is because we did the Eagles main channel franchise, and I wanted the biggest gap possible between the end of that and when we finally get around to an Eagles rebuild. It also helps that the Philadelphia Eagles went crazy this offseason and the roster is significantly different than when if I would have said rebuild this team in January for example uh, so let's take a look here at the roster my kind of thinkings and uh, I think we're gonna have a pretty good rebuild here to cap off all 32 and the reason why there's an asterisk next to it is I don't know if this is gonna be my last rebuild from now until when Madden 23 comes out I could you know there could be a, you know a video out there here or there but ultimately the rebuilds are probably winding down for the most part because you know i not for that's for me personally i don't like getting um and, and doing rebuild content all the way up to the new madden i like having that little bit of a gap that little bit of breather so that it you know you get eager to rebuild when the new game comes out but they've only the philadelphia eagles here on the offensive line i think as good of an offensive line in the nfl jordan mylotta franchise left tackle one of the greatest stories uh success stories dual athlete stories that the nfl has ever seen and he's a franchise tackle. We got Landon Dickerson, who uh, was very good as a rookie. And I think he's established himself as a starter on a very good offensive line. You have Jason Kelsey, who's the best center in the NFL. Don't at me. We have Kim Jurgens, who the Philadelphia Eagles selected in the second round. Really to be the successor to Jason Kelsey. But that right guard spot between these three guys, Siamalu solid, Andre Dillard, who I'm absolutely shocked. No team that needs tackle up. There's some bad teams with bad offensive tackles have not gone after Andre Dillard. I think they did. And Philly's just not giving him up for peanuts. They're like, this guy is very valuable to us. Uh, offensive line depth, he's he's cheap, he's affordable, and he can plug and play at left tackle for sure. Right tackle, if there's, you know, break glass in case of emergency, an injury situation. But, I mean, Andre Dillard, I think, would start at left tackle on, like, at least 10 teams in the NFL right now, which is kind of surprising. He's still on a rookie deal. Uh, but then we got Jurgens. I'm going to go with Jurgens just because he had the upside. He's a little bit younger than the other two players. And then you got Lane Johnson, Aging like a fine wine, top five right tackle, maybe even top three. Didn't give up a sack last season. He is so good when he is healthy. We have Dallas Goddard at tight end, who's pretty much getting close to being considered a consensus top five tight end in the NFL. Just kind of ignore our depth behind him. It's not great. Luckily, injuries are turned off. Running back room has a lot of depth. Miles Sanders entering the final year of his contract. Boston Scott and Kenny Gainwell. It's kind of the big question for the Eagles offense right here at the running back spot is, is Miles Sanders going to get a new contract? My gut is saying no. They're probably going to rock and roll with Kenny G. Maybe we'll bring back Boston Scott, keep bringing him on one-year deals, short-term deals. But I think Miles Sanders is probably going to ask too much for Philadelphia to re-sign him. He's a good player. I like him. Right attitude, but availability and I, I just think honestly the biggest thing for Miles Sanders getting a new contract is the Eagles offensive line I, I think we see when Miles Sanders is in he, he has definitely certain skill sets that Boss Scott and Kenny Gainwell and Miles Sanders can break off a big run but I think there's also something to be said where it's a salary cap league and when your offensive line is this dominant you just don't pay money for for running back so unless Miles Sanders wants a cut rate deal which he, you know, who knows what happens this year I think that's the biggest reason why Philly won't re-sign Miles Sanders is they're just like, we have good running backs that can just... We, our O-line is our running back, right? Just give us someone else that's not just going to be wanting super big contract. A.J. Brown might be short-selling him here. I think he could. There's a chance. Could be a superstar in Madden 23. We're going to rock and roll here with the 87 star. What a deal to acquire him from the Tennessee Titans. As long as he can stay healthy, he's an absolute monster. I can't remember the last time we had a wide receiver that was like the style of A.J. Brown, like it just, absolute, I, I can't wait, I cannot wait to see him on the field, you have Devontae Smith, who is again another budding star wide receiver in this league, I think with limited passing offense last year, he, ju he just made some ridiculous catches, and while he might not have the stat lines, or have the volume that Jamar Chase or Jalen Waddle had, I think he's still absolutely right in that tier, clearly at the bottom of the tier right now, but I still think that if you're grading last year's wide receiver core, and you're going like tier S tier, A tier. I think Devontae Smith is the last guy in S tier. I think you look at obviously Jamar Chase a little bit. Actually, you know, let's be fair. Jamar Chase is in the S tier. I think you probably put Jalen Waddle on top of the A tier. And Devontae Smith is right there with him in that A tier. Because let's be honest, Jamar Chase was kind of unstoppable. Whereas Devontae, you know, Devontae Smith and Jalen Waddle had some big time plays, but you know, weren't quite on that level. Also, didn't really have the same kind of quarterback throwing them the football. And then we got Quez Watkins. Wide receiver three, we are now channel legend, 
big fan. Like, if you told me right now, C4, you could get an Eagles jersey for free. You know, I'm not, not going to be investing my hard-earned money. I, I'd say I'd, I might just take Quez at that opportunity because I'm just such a fan. Uh, and then up behind that, you got Pascal, Greg Ward, Jalen Rager. Ugh. Uh, quarterback room is working interesting for this rebuild. We have Jalen Hurts. In the last couple of rebuilds we've done, our quarterbacks have all found success. Hasn't been really been any rebuild that we've had to pull the plug on a quarterback. But if we do, and I, I'm going to be honest, I don't know. I don't know how many years we're going to give Jalen Hurts. We might just give him this year like the Philadelphia Eagles are in real life. You know, could this, and Minshew's only on a one-year deal, could this turn into like a Carson Strong rebuild? Like that that might be interesting. Cannon of an arm, 94 throw power. Uh, rest of the stats, I mean, they are what they are. But we have an option here. I'll just say that. We have a legitimate option if Jalen Hurts does not take that next step. If he has a, if he has a good season, gets up to a start dev, this is going to be the Jalen Hurts rebuild. But if he is got off, he has 20 touchdowns, 22 touchdowns to 14 picks. I, I, I feel like I might want to give Carson Strong an opportunity here. Even though it's UDFA, a lot of people, myself included, had him as a fringe first-round quarterback, if not a legitimate first-round quarterback prospect this year. But the knee, the medicals, we're always going to be a major red flag, a major hurdle. So that'll be something to keep an eye on. And then you flip to the defensive side of the ball, which is where Philly really, really, really did a good job. Uh, we got Brandon Grant coming back. Derek Barnett, for what it's worth, as long as he's depth, Derek Barnett is a solid defensive end three. He just can't really be a starter. At the tackle, you have Hargrave, who was a monster last year. So many sacks. You have Milton Williams, who was good in bursts. You have Fletcher Cox, who's back on a one-year deal. And you have Fletcher Cox's successor, S tier, one of one, freak of nature, Jordan Davis, 76, star dev. And I've actually seen some people, like not Eagle fans, people just on Reddit and stuff like that being like, can we guess what the rookie Raiders are going to look like in Madden 23? And more often than not, they had Jordan Davis with a superstar. But for me in this rebuild, we're just going to keep him modest on the star dev. Uh, linebacking core, which was very questionable for you. We have Hassan Riddick as kind of our Sam pass rusher. As much as Nakobe Dean, we gave him 72 star for a rookie out of Georgia. Which is one of the, you know across the across the draft, people are regarding him as one of the best value picks. Uh, we'll we'll probably still just because T.J. Edwards. I, I think we I, I like T.J. Edwards a lot. Like when when we were, like I had him mocked to the Eagles when he was coming out of Wisconsin. Like in my draft, we got him as a UDFA. But push comes to shove, Nicobe Dean. It's like it's one of those things. I think they have very similar strengths, and T.J. Edwards' weakness is not really a weakness for Nicobe Dean. T.J. Edwards is just not. Not much of an athlete. I think he's a good player. I think in real life, it's great having him. Like, our linebacking core is so much better. But I think we're going to go to Kobe Dean for this rebuild. And then they got Kaiser White, another player. Especially if we can get him a dev trade. Could be a long-term player. Long-term option for us here with the Eagles. The corner room, Darius Slay. Big play, Slay. Absolute baller last year. I think very much firmly re-solidified himself as a top 10 corner. Maybe trending towards closer to 5 than he is to 10. If not top 5. But I, I think... Let's be completely unbiased here. I think he solidified himself as a top 10. And I, my, my little bit of bias, I think he's closer to 5 than 10. They got James Bradbury, 85 star, coming up from the Giants. We got Avante Maddox, very, very solid starting slot corner. And then it comes to the bad news on this team, the safety room. You have Harris, 80 star on a one-year deal. And you have Epps, who really is going to have to get a breakout scenario at some point to even have a chance at being our starter. But I like having like one clear position that we need to go in and try to improve. Uh, in the draft and or free agency. And that is going to be that free safety position. But very, very bullish on this team. A lot rides on the quarterback spot. A lot rides on how good Jalen Hurts can be in this offense, in the sim. Let's see it right now firsthand. Without further ado, getting into year one of this final Madden 22 realistic rebuild of the Philadelphia Eagles. All right, kind of cool. We have a breakout scenario for Hassan Riddick, star pass rusher, trying to become a superstar pass rusher off a Week 7 victory. We got a Lions. This should be, you know, as we go above 500 for the first time of the season. Should be an easy game. Well, not easy, but we get the Dove, 33-27. And in that matchup, Hassan Riddick gets the Dev. Let's go. Superstar, 2,000 XP. And from this, we might as well just roll right in. Do some contract negotiations. I have no idea what the salary cap is for Philly. Usually when you do, oops, sorry. Usually when you do a Philadelphia Eagles rebuild, it's it's under, you know, it's understood that you have no salary cap. So it's good. I, you know, I know Kaiser White's on a one-year deal. I got to resign. Oh my god. All right, who wants who wants to take the first peek at what our salary cap looks like? So the most important player, um, I mean Kelsey starts first. Oh, we actually have a decent amount of money. 
Okay, we'll throw Kelsey a two-year deal. Uh, we'll give Bradbury two years if he'll take it until he's 30. That'd be cool. Get him locked up. Anthony Harris, and we can do better. Kaiser White, I think he's going to be one of those guys that is primed for a dev trade increase. He wants more money, of course. Yes, the normal dev player kind of betting us over here. Big question is Fletcher Cox. I think he's good, but also I don't think he's going to be here in real life beyond this, you know, this upcoming season because they clearly drafted Jordan Davis. You're not going to have Jordan Davis. But then also, I don't know, man. There's a chance Philly's going to be running like multiple three, four fronts. And if you have a front three of Fletcher Cox, Jordan Davis, Javon Hargrave, that's kind of ridiculous. And I wouldn't hate having bring Fletcher Cox back on a one-year deal where it's 13 mil. But it also kind of takes a year-away development from Jordan Davis getting the reps that he needs on the inside. So I think it's probably going to be the best interest of this team. We'll let it ride. I mean, how about this? If Fletcher Cox gets eight or more sacks this year, uh, I'll resign him at the end of the season because obviously he balled out. And maybe his, he would regress and be a little bit cheaper. But right now, Kaiser White, even with Kaiser White, honestly, at, at that price point, we might as well wait and see, especially if after sticking his nose over that offer, if he's going to get a dev trade or not before we commit to like, you know, 45, 46 million dollars. Especially if he doesn't go up dev trade. I'm not paying that for a normal dev player. All right, here's where we're going to be forward thinking. This season is a write-off. We are last place in the NFC East. And I was like, well, maybe there's a chance Jalen Hurts actually played well. And not, not so much the case. I mean, it's not bad, but that's like kind of Jalen Hurts. 3,600 yards, 23 touchdowns, 7 picks. Rushing yards aren't there. Maybe that's a little bit down to the playbook. But what we're going to do just to make things interesting, we're going to give Carson Strong the last three games of the regular season. Obviously, he's a 68 overall quarterback, so I'm not expecting a drastic change. But let's give him some reps. Give us at least, like, all everyone is just sucking right now. Um... So let's just see what maybe, you know, maybe that's what we're missing. We're missing a guy with 95 throw power. All I'm going to say, all I'm going to say. Kurt Strong won his first game. 20 to 13. Let's take a look at what he did. Did we have an answer at quarterback? You know, I don't know if it's tied down to throw power. But we've had some very disappointing games with Jalen Hurts. And 20, I mean, 20 points is not a lot. But, you know, one touchdown, no picks. Um motivated Hassan Reddick and the defense kind of go off here a little bit Hassan Reddick Fletcher Cox nice in the regular season finale we ate I think he had three touchdowns the week before too Carson what we end up making the playoffs at nine and eight on the back of Carson Straw. 3-0, and oh, Jalen Hurts, okay, Carson Strong finished, 8 touchdowns, no picks. I mean, might be the end here. Miles Sanders, 900 yards, 15 touchdowns. We had 12-16 and 16 for Devontae, 11-3 for A.J. Brown, 9-3 and 3 for Goddard, 8-5 and 5 for Quez. I'm happy with really all of those numbers. On the defensive side, 162 Tackles for N'Kobe Dean. Three interceptions, nine TFLs. Twelve and a half sacks for the new superstar pass rusher, Hassan Riddick. Eleven and a half, Javon Hargrave. Nine and a half, Fletcher Cox. Seven. That does... I might have to give Fletcher a one-year deal. Uh, three picks to Kobe Dean. Slay with three. Wallace, two, two. Ace Bradbury with one on 89 tackles. But ladies and gentlemen, Carson Strong in the sim. Something is going on. He's strong in the sim. NFC off. I mean, obviously these awards, uh, the rookie ones are going to be kind of off base here. But uh, N'Kobe Dean, technically, for what it's worth, is the runner-up for Defensive Rookie of the Year. And Devontae Smith is runner-up for Offensive Rookie of the Year. And then looking at the rest of these awards, we have Hassan Reddick as Linebacker of the Year. That could be a dev trait. We have Jake Elliott as Kicker of the Year. But my God, making this chain, would we be undefeated? Three games, eight touchdowns, no picks for Carson Strong. Gets us into the playoffs. I mean, you can't really write it much better than that, if we're being completely honest. Uh, let's get Devontae Smith here an upgrade. We do get a sim this first game. What's that, Dallas? That's not, uh, that's not really what you want to see. You don't want to see Dallas because, you know, they're most likely going to win. But then again, Card Strong's been on point. You know what we're going to do? Because this is so monumental, because this is a week 16 switch, let's, go, let's just see. Let's just see what happens, man, when we hop in. 
We play the moments and just see what Carson Strong can do. Would be awesome if he was a cheat code. Yeah, these aren't my rosters. It wasn't like I juiced Carson Strong and gave him like better animations or anything. This is just Carson Strong is what he is. Eight touchdowns, no picks. And he's going to start in his first playoff game against the Dallas Cowboys. And we get seven points on our opening drive offensively. Defense gets a stop. Dallas gets a score right before halftime. We need another score. Carson Strong is crushing it for the first half. Get a touchdown over the second half. I don't think we need touchdowns in the game here against Dallas. This is probably where they're going to start to pull ahead here. Yeah. Oh, it's like that friggin'. I, I reference a lot. It's like that Fast and Furious one. Like, we had him. Can we get a throw off here with Carson Strong? Maybe a little momentum boost. Oh my god. We had him in the first half. But we popped our knots too early. We go Quez? No. Oh. Carson Strong, get 300 yards, no time. No picks. Let me get this step off. He's very good in the sim. Look, he got wheels. Throws the dart to Vontae Smith. Three touchdowns. No, I don't even care. It's a losing effort. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. Well, we'll take away the one that I just got for him. Eleven touchdowns to no interceptions in his final four games. Goes three and one. We have our quarterback, ladies and gentlemen. It was not Jalen Hurts. I gave Jalen Hurts every opportunity. He wasn't that bad, but he wasn't elevating this team. Carson Strong, who's now, what, I think four or five overall points behind Jalen Hurts. Just, he's better in our offense. Better in the sim. It could be the throw power. could be, I don't know. But proof is right here. So the Super Bowl, the Ravens, the Hollywood Brown Super Bowl. Apparently, the Ravens knock off the Cardinals. But let's take a look at our squad. Do we have any dev trade increases or decreases on offense and or defense? I'm going to say Son Reddick on defense. On offense, Devontae Smith is up to a superstar. That is pretty awesome. And on the defensive side, I'm going to think Reddick's up to X-Factor, which he is. Fletcher Cox is back up to an X-Factor. No death for N'Kobe Dean. That's kind of what we're looking for a little bit there. But uh, I also think now it is clear. Fletch, got to kind of bring Fletcher Cox back and pause maybe the development a little bit of Jordan Davis. You can't, you know, Fletch is, Fletch is, I, mean, I don't, I think it's, I don't think it's out of pocket to say Fletch is an Eagles legend, right? But uh, point being, I, I think it would be disrespectful to at least not even offer him, uh, you know, an updated offer. For him kind of popping off here. Let's look at Hassan Reddick. What is his ability? Relentless. That's actually pretty cool. And then we can give him... Uh, I don't know any of these moves. We're going to go BOGO. Just too many of those abilities. Let's be honest. I, I feel like there should be less ability. Less is more when it comes to the ability uh, department. So let's go here to the next week and throw some offers out. Kaiser White was going to get paid only if he went up dev trade. He did not. So that means we can kind of just, with that $54 million. I mean, look, he's, yeah. No, I like Kaiser White. I think he might go up dev trade. That's just so much money to commit to a guy that might not go up dev. But let's see what goes with Fletch. Give him a one year. We'll go five and seven. One year, 12 million bucks. And Fletcher Cox resigns. Man, I don't want to pay that. I, I feel like Kaiser White's going to be even cheaper on the open market. But he is a perfect scheme fit. But then, we, I mean, we could just easily put TJ Edwards on the outside. Or Nicole Dean on the outside. So, I'm going to stick to my guns here. I like Kaiser White in real life. I would give Kaiser White probably another contract. But he needed that dev. Just to be clear, we're playing on the same rules that we've done on all of these, like, kind of updated rebuilds. You're kind of replaying... The 2021 season, even though you're not. And uh, we have the Dolphins' first round pick. We have pick 2, 20, and 28. Um, I'll say this. I'm going to... I mean, I'm not going to punish myself. We get the number 2 pick. But I will trade one of those 2s so that it can properly represent the fact that we have two twos like the next year. You know what I'm saying? All right, so we're going to do this trade here with the Saints. Give them... Uh, what? What? I'll, pay, I'll overpay a little bit just to make this trade go through. I'll give you like a one and a four. Give me that future first. What? One, four, and a six. Final offer. Take it or leave it. Thank you. 
So now we only have two first round picks this year and we still have two first round picks next year. But at least there's no three first round picks for the Philadelphia Eagles. And I needed a safety, either safety spot. And it's your classic Ronnie Harrison's the only guy that even looks remotely interesting. So we're going to kind of target these two positions here with our, our top picks in the draft. Hopefully there's a safety worth drafting. Usually though, you can get pretty beastly safeties in the draft. We have a fifth year option here for Andre Dillard. We are not going to pick up his fifth year option. All right, so we have the luxury of the number two pick. This, there's some pretty good looking safeties, but we want to pull the trigger on them right away. Uh, there's uh, like we have Pierce here, great school going to Florida. Combine looks very good. Um, but we got to kind of look at like more premier positions for the number two pick. And there's really down to two guys. I think you have Deontay Haggins, who's like the top rated corner. First player was a pass rusher that I actually did have some interest in. Uh, so now we're kind of like, do we go with the second best pass rusher? Or do we with the top corner available? Question with the top corner available is obviously we extended James Bradbury. It, you draft this guy under the assumption that, you know, Slay's going to regress pretty bad here soon. Um, and he looks pretty good. And he's unlikely to be available at our next pick. But then it's also like you look at defensive end. I think defensive end, we have Stevie right here of Alabama, who looks freak of nature. 6'1", not a lot of length. But the combine is as good as you can get it. And I, I feel like with Stevie Wright, it's just like, what are our defensive ends? Who's, who's likely more to regress, Brandon Graham or Darius Slay? And I, I think we're more worried about Brandon Graham's replacement. So I think we're going to go Stevie Wright at pick two out of Alabama. Hit in a div pass. Let's go. All right, now it's just about luxury. This safety is probably going to be worthy of a first-round pick. Abdul Pierce out of Florida, 6'3", 204. Very good combine. Normal dev, but he, he should be a solid player. We're also very lucky because Meadows at strong safety was really the only safety at, at that this position looked good. I'm a little worried about this D zone coverage, but again, when it comes to safeties, you can usually just trust the combine and his pro day, five, top five in the 40, top five in the three cone, top five in the 20 yard shuttle. There's not rocket science. If you're watching my rebuilds, this guy should be good. It's all about will he have a dev trait or not? And we got two normal dev safeties coming. That's not a death sentence. They play a lot. If they're good rating, though, they might have a lot of opportunities for dev trade scenarios in their first season or two. Look at our draft recap. The ratings are good. We got our one hidden dev two on right, uh, the defensive end, which we will absolutely take. 76. Pierce and Meadows, both 74s. Going to have an opportunity to start right away. Rest of the draft, which is kind of average. 69 running back, 67 wide receiver, 66 tight end, and Trey Colon. Actually, I haven't seen a, a player built like this. Usually, I go tallest player, but 200, a 5'10", 233 punter was too good. And 69 overall is not too too bad, but uh, a solid solid draft, and we have two first-round picks next year. All right, let's go. Year two for the Philadelphia Eagles. Here's how the team lines up. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to give Carson Strong like the same kind of deal we did with uh, Jalen Hurts. Give him this year. Things aren't going good. I mean, it's clear that we're just got to find a different quarterback. You know, I'm not... Carson Strong ended the year very strong, but... That could have just been a good run of form. If he's, you know, if it's not meant to happen, if it's not meant for Carson Strong to be epic in a Eagles rebuild in Madden 22, it's not meant to happen. I'm not going to force it, but we're going to give him this year, much like we gave Jalen Hurts last year. Uh, other than that, changes on the offense is really Devontae Smith has elevated himself to a superstar wide receiver. And on the defensive side of the ball, we have a new X Factor in Hassan Riddick. Two new safeties in Pierce and Meadows. We're going to give right the start over to Brandon Graham just because of the upside. And uh, other than that, man, this team is should make the playoffs. But it's going to be interesting to see, man. Carson Strong, what was it, 11 touchdowns, no interceptions, was 3-1 and one in his four starts, including the playoffs last year. Can he continue that here as our true starter in year two of this rebuild? So we're looking pretty good at the midway point. They got a game lead over the Dallas Cowboys. We're 5-2. and two. The Carson Strong era has been exceptional so far, at least from a win standpoint. Uh, we have a look at our contracts here. We do have a lot of money. Uh, first up is Carson Strong. Oh, man, we have to pay him because he was like UDFA, right? I have no problem with that. Uh, all right, first up, we will re-sign Miles Sanders. I didn't, you know, salary cap's not super high. He wants more money. What an asshole. Uh, and again, we're just in a spot where it's like, man, I can't, can't not resign Hargrave and Fletcher Cox. But we know Jordan Davis is right there. But they, they're taking these money. They're playing at a high level still. So we'll definitely come back to the table on Miles Sanders. Perfect. 
Mm. I don't hate that for TJ Edwards. And then we'll definitely come back and re-sign Carson Strong. So Carson Strong and Miles Sanders will also get themselves new contracts. So at the end of year two, the first year of the Carson Strong era, we go 11 and six and make the playoffs. No first round bye, but we do have a breakout scenario ahead of this matchup here against the Falcons and a very good Desmond Ritter. I was like, man, did Carson Strong go off? And I was like, oh, look at A.J. Brown. 1,600 yards, 16 touchdowns on only 84 catches. So he was a big play machine. Not top three. I mean, we have Taylor Heineke with 5,500 yards and 46 freaking touchdowns. Um, and on the back of the defense, not a lot outside of A.J. Brown. But that's good because A.J. Brown on that start up, I would love for him to go up depth trade. Carson Strong, fifth in yards, fourth in touchdowns. Jalen Hurts wasn't even in that. I mean, I almost should have put Jalen Hurts and just seen, like, it must be something with, like, archetype in playbook, maybe? Like, Carson Strong is literally, like, if you flipped all of Jalen Hurts' archetypes, that's what Carson Strong is. Like, get off improviser, get off scrambler, he's strong arm, pocket quarterback. And, I mean, for us, Eagle fans, he's up to 96 throw power. This guy's crazy, man. Uh, massive season for Miles Sanders. Finally! I have one of those, like, man, you look anywhere else in a rebuild, there's always other teams running back that have stat lines like this. It's, it's, it's not super uncommon, but it's 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 uncommon. 1,600 yards, 25 touchdowns for Miles Sanders. We got 510 from Kenny Gainwell on the receiving front. 1,600 yards, 16 catches. Uh, such a story for A.J. Brown. 1,012 for Devontae. Almost 99 for Dallas Goddard. 700 yards for Quez Watkins. Defensively, N'Kobe Dean. Pretty much copy and paste from last year. 144 tackles. Three interceptions, seven TFLs, 17 and a half sacks to Son Riddick, 11 and a half to Von Hargrave. Finally, a little bit of dip there from Fletch. The rookie, Stevie Wright, obviously didn't get down the field a whole lot here as a rookie, more of a rotational guy. He got two sacks. Uh, four picks by Slay, leading the team. Three picks there, Garrett Bradbury. Uh, two from Meadows, two from Pierce, our two rookie starting safeties. One thing that was weird, though, is not one of those safeties had a depth trade scenario this whole season. So... That kind of sucked. Yearly Awards MVP went to Josh Allen. Miles Sanders coming in at number three. Carson Strong at number six. Desmond Ritter, the man we see in the playoffs, at number five. Uh, in the NFC Outs play of the year, went to Heineke. Defense play of the year, went to Hassan Riddick. He already got the X Factor, so I'm not expecting, uh, you know, obviously there's nothing else he can go. But look at that, Carson Strong, the best, second best quarterback in the NFC. Heineke at three. Desmond Ritter at four. Jacoby Reset. I mean, Jesus Christ, man. What a... What not real life? Uh, pretty much all these top 10 quarterbacks of the NFC are. Miles Sanders was running back of the year. I mean, he's another guy on that star death, much like A.J. Brown. I'm, I'm expecting Miles Sanders and A.J. Brown to be superstar come the end of this season as they're both running back and wide receiver of the year. Kelsey is lineman of the year. Lane Johnson coming in top five. Linebacker goes to his son, Riddick. Like, just domination from the Philadelphia Eagles from an individual standpoint. But this is our second year making the playoffs. Will we be one and done? Let's take a look at this breakout scenario first. It would be cool to get that. And that's TJ Edwards, normal dev outside linebacker. At least we got a silver lining. If we lose, but Edwards goes up to a, you know, star dev, that, that'd be at least something. But I really, you know, for our second playoff game under Carson Strong, we need to see a win here. And we do 21-17. I would love to honestly see three passing touchdowns, no picks from Carson Strong, just because that's how damn good he's been. He got a touchdown, no picks. Didn't really... We relied on that dominant run game, I suppose. It wasn't actually really that big. Car Strong, two touchdowns total. Miles Sanders, 89 yards. 62 and a touchdown. Devontae, was it the defense? I mean, hey, ooh. That's a lot of tackles there. I think Edwards is going to go up dev trait. Uh, sack and a half is on Riddick. Sack for Fletcher Cox. Interception from Slay as the Philadelphia Eagles move on to the division round and take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. A revenge from the 2021 playoffs. Where the Bucks absolutely crushed Jalen Hurts and the Philadelphia Eagles. That was depressing. But TJ Edwards also a double. We get our first playoff victory, and TJ Edwards up to a star dev 5K XP. Feel very good about that. Can we with Carson Strong? Let's actually spend our upgrades here. Make sure we're full strength. Take down, I assume. Oh my god, we actually have a lot of upgrades. Uh, but we gotta take down Tyler Heineke and the Bucks. We spent our upgrades. It's the battle of the unlikely corners. Carson Strong's very good. Taylor Heineke. Very good with the NFC Championship game on the line. It's an absolute shootout, but the Philadelphia Eagles win 42 to 31 to take on the Rams. Other side of the bracket, Patriots. Oh, can we get an Eagles Patriots Super Bowl? 
That'd be pretty awesome. Good uh, run it back for the third time. But 42-31 in a matchup. Carson Strong, two touchdowns, no picks. Two picks for Heineke. Could have been the difference maker. Clean football from Carson Strong. Carson Strong also is just sneaking in rushing touchdowns. Three total touchdowns for Strong. Buck 34 for A.J. Brown. Defensively, Avante Maddox, 12 tackles. We get a sack from Burnett and Wright. Two interceptions from Slay. Slay has been on fire. Three interceptions total. And it is now time for the NFC Championship game. Let's spend our upgrades here quickly. Nothing too crazy. Jalen Rager, oh my God. Thank God we don't have to rely on that guy. Uh, let's just straight up sim this one again. I wasn't going to hop in and see the moments, but we'll see what happens. And the Eagles are going to the freaking Super Bowl. 28 to 21. We take down the Rams. What? And it's a pants rematch. We're running it back. Let's see what happened in this matchup. Carson Strong is a glitch. Two touch just doesn't turn the football over. Uh, I mean, if Slay get another pick, that'd actually be kind of crazy. Bucks 66, two touchdowns from Miles Sanders. So we're kind of seeing how he had the season he had. Uh, big game from Quez on the defensive side. Oh, actually, the picks weren't on Slay, but Riddick, Fletcher, Cox, and Wright had the uh, sacks, interception, Avante Maddox. And obviously, we're going to get front row. Front row tickets here. Okay, I actually don't want this to end. I'm kind of hoping we lose because I just want to keep going. I want to see how much more Carson Strong. We'll just we'll auto spin everybody. Let's just see where Carson Strong's at. Uh, obviously, we've been pumping our points in a strong arm. That's how we've got plus three throw power. From where he was as a rookie. He's up to star dev. He got his dev trait. Oh, we actually have all our dev traits. AJ Brown should be superstar now, I believe. We'll pump that point in the slot there. Just to continue to make him a scheme fit. And he is now superstar. And I assume that Miles Sanders is also going to be a superstar. We'll take a look at the roster here, actually. In case we do win the Super Bowl, because we're going to probably wrap this one up. But again, this will be the only time that I will say. Because things are going exceptionally well. At least in year two for this, that I... Oh, we have a breakout for this Super Bowl as well. This could be a, at least a silver lining opportunity. But let's see what kind of dev traits we have gained on the offensive side of the ball. And it is A.J. Brown, Miles Sanders, Devontae Smith. On the defensive side of the ball, T.J. Edwards up to superstar. N'Kobe Dean up to superstar. This James Bradbury up to superstar. This team is absolutely... And we don't even know what Wright's dev trait is. Given how good this rebuild, he's probably another X Factor or something crazy like that. So let's go to the breakouts player, and then we're going to hop in front row to see if we can win the Super Bowl here. And it's Cordell Matthews, one of our normal dev safeties. About time. One of these guys got a dev trade scenario. Let's see if we can hit that as well as, uh, you know, I'm not going to say it. Because obviously if we do win the Super Bowl, I'm not going to be too upset. But also, you know, away she goes. We'll hold you guys up here all goddamn day. Well, let's see. Here we go. Big time matchup. Patriots Eagles for the third time they are meeting in the Super Bowl Patriots get the first score Mac Jones able to move the football kind of cutting down the Philadelphia Eagles here not a lot of offense I don't even think we've been in Patriots territory here in the first half but finally getting a touchdown late in the first Patriots go all the way down the field get a touchdown themselves let's see what Carson Strong can do man we're gonna need him to play very well we're gonna need to see exactly what the sim has been seeing for us to have a chance here and I, I don't think we did enough unfortunately get a couple you know if we get a couple garbage time scores make us feel good about ourselves which we did we ended up making it a one score game just way too slow of a start we lose the super bowl unfortunately but i kind of get what i want i don't i didn't want it to be over that quickly uh in this matchup here carson strong almost 300 yards two touchdowns do you have any picks he did have one interception big game from Miles sanders turns of two touchdowns 99 yards for aj brown 80 some in a tutty there for uh, Devontae Smith, 14 tackles for TJ Edwards. A couple sacks right and them. And Maddox gets his back-to-back -back interceptions. But unfortunately, we crash over the playoffs. But hey, at least we get year three of the Eagles franchise. And we did have our silver lining opportunity for one of our normal dev safeties to go up. And, oh, fuck, we didn't get anything. What a write-off. Look at a free agency. Just not a rebuild that we need to really go into... You know, looking at our team, like literally look at all these ones. There's no upgrades. It's all superstars. The only one upgrade that could be had that I saw was at free safety. You could get Juwan Thornhill, who's 27 superstar. But they get Pierce was one of our, you know, first round picks. So like that's, or second round pick, whatever it was, premier pick. Let's continue to let those guys start and keep our money to be able to, you know, re-sign our own upcoming free agents. <laughs> All 
All right, so we have two first round picks again, almost winner of the Super Bowl. So what I'm kind of looking at is getting younger in the offensive line, getting younger in the secondary with Slay regressing. So I'm gonna look here at Antoine Flowers. Again, just strictly going out the combine. Kind of usually a safe bet. And even though a little bit small, 5'10", 190, more of Vontae Maddox style, hidden dev. Let's go. Got another lineman, solid stats, good combine. Again, just getting a little bit younger on the offense. Line and hidden dev, Eli Fitzsimmons out of South Florida. Let's go, 88 strength. Let's look at our draft recap. Hit on both of our first round picks. Flowers, 74 hidden dev. Fitzsimmons, 73 hidden dev. We got a 71 normal dev, just, you know, special teamer at this point, 68 DN. Fourth round, 72 hidden dev tight end, Larry Benedict. Possession, so he is a scheme fit. So that's a pretty nice tight end two to put behind Dallas Goddard. Couple of normal dev depth pieces kind of round this one out, but three hit devs, I will take that. Coming into our bye in year three, we are, well, you know, technically first in the East. Dallas just has a game in hand right now at six and three. Very happy with how that has started. Looking at that number one passing offense, number five rushing defense, kind of good balance right there. Well, let's take a look at our contracts. We haven't been signing anybody on free agency, so that's a reason for that, that we can pretty much re-sign any and everybody that we want, and this is going to be very expensive. I'm hoping that we have like $130 million worth of salary cap. Uh, let's start with, oh, obviously, let's just start here. AJ Brown, give you a four year deal, $75 million. You've been amazing. You're the best wide receiver in the NFL last year. We have Hassan Riddick, who's been a sack machine. That is very expensive. We get him locked up. We have Jason Kelsey, who's going to be on this team until he does not want to be, aka retirement. Get him on a one year. Uh, Slay's been productive for us, so again, we'll get him on a one. Uh, we got to get Nicobe Dean here. Give him five-year deal if he'll take that, which he will. We got Jurgens at guard. He's still a solid starting guard. Plus, if we give him something like a five-year deal, the cap hit is not too too bad. He's gonna pay me to say we. I don't know if we could pay. I mean, we we haven't. Like, there hasn't been anybody worth signing on free agency. To be completely fair, so I think we could pretty much sign anyone. This might be the turning point, though. That, you know, we move off of Fletcher Cox, even though he's an X-Factor, and commit to Jordan Davis for the main of the rebuild. Just because I, I don't think there's any... No. We have no money to pay Fletch. Everyone else locked in. Wow, that was a lot of money spent. <laughs> and we lost four in a row to close out the season. Eight and nine. Uh, definitely weren't as good as we were last year. Harrison Strong, still very good. Top 10 in passing. Third in, I mean, we might got Superstar, maybe. 10 picks, though. A little uncharacteristic for him so far. He hasn't been really turning over the football a whole lot. Big drop off for the run. What? Dude, that's like half as much rushing production. H half? How does that happen to Sim? How do you have that big of a discrepancy? Devontae's crushing it. 13 and 19, 1007 AJ Brown, big year from Quez, solid year. I mean, these numbers are fairly consistent. That is shocking. We're what, uh, like 14 less rushing touchdowns? I mean, Kenny G had like five and 10 last year. So like we left like 20 rushing touchdowns off the board somehow. Holy shit. Nicobe Dean, 140 tackles, nine interceptions. 14 sacks Reddick, 14 sacks Hargrave, 10 and a half Fletcher Cox. Nine? That's right up there with like the 30 some sacks we saw with Miles Garrett. What a year, Nicobe Dean. Eagles defensive playbook, pretty good in the sim. MVP went to Lamar Jackson. Harrison Strong coming to number seven. NFC offense player went to McCaffrey, defense player went to Nicobe Dean. I think he's very obviously going to be an X Factor when all is said and done. Devontae Smith is wide receiver. He could go up to X Factor as well here this season. Riddick is linebacker of the year. Somehow nine interceptions. Nine. Oh, actually, sorry, that's DBs. Nine interceptions. How's he come at six? I don't think I've seen more interceptions. Like, why was it Kobe not even showing up there? Did I just miss it? Oh, no. Yeah, he's right there. Nine interceptions. Love that, man. Silver lining for just having a god-awful record this year. Nine interceptions to Kobe Dean. And hey, awesome, we're $11 million over the salary cap. And taking a look, Kobe Dean went up to an X Factor. We also got two points to spend. I mean, hey, making him a pass cover linebacker and, and, and prioritizing making him that. Nine interceptions, that's the most interceptions, it's not even close, that I've had for a linebacker. And just like that, man, That's I can only hope this is gonna be real life. 
So a little bit of like a waste of a year, but we know Nicobe Dean went up to an X-Factor, so we still have our roster progressing. I'm hoping Devontae's up to X-Factor, which he is. Uh, Carson Strong's up to Superstar. How did I not even notice that? Yeah, one of the better stories that we've had. Carson Strong makes... I don't even know how he got it. He just had a good year. A lot of, lot of production. Uh, Benedict, our hidden dev tight end, comes out as star. On the defense, we had a hidden dev corner. Rookie, Flowers, he is star. Um, that is it for the upgrades. There's going to be no more Fletcher Cox. We're going to go Hardgrave, Jordan Davis going forward. We have no money, so I, we're going to have to cut somebody. I don't want to say, and I wish this, but if Kelsey or Lane retired, it probably would help us out from a salary cap standpoint. Yeah, they're looking at retire, but they're just not retired. This is like worst case scenario for like, unless Philly can, you know, transition Cam Jurgens to guard. Like this is like, you don't want to wait and hope Jason Kelsey retires so that you get that return on investment of a second round pick. But he's just not retiring here. We're going into year four. We have a fifth year option on Devontae Smith. We are, even though we have $500,000 of salary cap, we're absolutely going to pick that up right now. And uh, we'll have to, you know, make it work somehow because we can't let Devontae Smith go. He's amazing. Uh, for the draft, this is just going to be our only pick. Uh, just hidden dev safety, I suppose, because both their safeties are still stuck on normal. And there we go. We get Harold Blair, hidden dev. And uh, guess what? Just did that off the combine. Draft recap. So we have our hidden dev. And I'm not going to lie, I just simmed it out after that because our team's so stacked, didn't really matter. Computer hooked us up. Glenn Whitfield, 73, normal dev. I mean, there could be a hidden dev in these guys. Nothing's looking too, too crazy. But Blair, 78! We might have just got the best... This literally, I took two seconds. I was like, ah, right, we kind of need a dev trade safety. This guy was first place. And we ended up probably getting a top three player in the draft class, if not the best. Tied for first. It's that easy. Hey, hit that subscribe button if you've been able to dominate your drafts because of watching me draft. That'd be cool, huh? Oh man, our win streak ended at five. We start the year five and one. The Bucks able to knock us off. Uh, I don't even really know if it's worth talking about for you. I think we still are pretty tight. Uh, yeah, actually, no, we got a little bit of leeway here. We could offer Josh Sweat a three-year deal. Definitely want to re-sign Landon Dickerson. Give something like a five-year. Get that cap hit under 10 mil. Again, Kelsey just going to keep offering him one years, even though it might not be the best way of handling our salary cap. He's a legend. I can't let him walk. Uh, wow. Uh, we got Matt Stafford's side as our backup. Uh, I'm going to give definitely Jordan Davis a contract. I mean, obviously, Davis at that price, Avante Maddox at that price. I think Hargrave on a one year at that price ain't too bad if he'll take it. I, again, I just think we just keep. The one-year deals are, are really just, you know, sucking up our salary cap here. But these guys are still solid. And uh, I think because of the longer-term deals, we should be able to get Maddox and Davis as well. But it should be another year that's going to be very tight around the salary cap in the offseason. Hey, how about we just win the Super Bowl this year? It doesn't matter. We were 5-1, and one, now we're 6-5. and five. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So at the end of year four, we are, were able to make the playoffs. No NFC uh, East title. Finish 11-6 and tied with the Giants. They had some... Sort of tiebreaker. We have to take on the Green Bay Packers and Jordan Love. Jordan Love does sim out pretty good. But I mean, what quarterback doesn't? Look at the big stats. Carson Strong might have the first touchdowns in the league. Second passer, 41 tutties. A.J. Brown, leading receiver. Hopefully he can get his, if we make a Super Bowl run anyways, a, uh, a, a X factor. T.J. Edwards. It was nine interceptions for Kobe Dean. T.J. Edwards, seven picks. Eagles defense is overpowered, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so Carson Strong was second in yard, second in touchdown. So that is X factor if we can make the Super Bowl. On the rushing standpoint, finally I get a little bit back up to where we were. Like how was last year so weird? Even the yards are down a little bit, but at least the touchdowns are up. Just so weird, man. It's like a crapshoot. You never know what you're gonna get. Receiving numbers very good. 16 and nine for AJ Brown. 13 and seven for Devontae Smith. 1,009 for Quez, and we got 10 touchdowns. Dallas got even six touchdowns at the backfield for Miles Sanders. Just a very potent offense. 137 tackles, seven interceptions for TJ Edwards. Hell yeah, nine sacks, Hargrave, seven and a half Riddick. So the, the sacks are down that we no longer have Fletcher Cox, but everything else is pretty, pretty much up there. Harold Blair, the safety, first round pick, 78, tied for the best player. Four interceptions, 82 tackles, and he's superstar. Let's 
go, man. This rebuild, outside of winning a Super Bowl, everything has kind of fallen into place as good as you could have hoped for. MVP went to Lamar Jackson. I mean, we haven't won an MVP, I guess. Carson Strong, third place. But I never really thought at any point, unless like Jalen Hurts went off because you'd have the rushing numbers uh, to win the MVP. Office play your Carson Strong runner up for the individual awards. Wow. Blair coming in at three. I thought he'd be a little bit higher. Best quarterback goes to Carson Strong. Best wide receiver goes to A.J. Brown. And that is unfortunately it for that. But now it's all about team success. And for the love of our salary cap, it'd be pretty good if we could go on and win a Super Bowl on this run. First up is the Green Bay Packers. And we handle a business 35 to 14. One, two, worried about it. Sets up a matchup with the Atlanta Falcons. Actually bodied the Rams in that matchup. But let's take a look at this one. 35 14. 21 points, four touchdowns, no picks. Carson Strong has been a revelation for the Philadelphia Eagles. Buck 41 for Miles Sanders. Two touchdowns, four yards shy of 100 yards for Devontae Smith. 13 tackles, Nicobe Dean. We got a sack for Hargrave. Interceptions for Slay and Hassan Reddick showing that, well, he is a pass rusher. He has a skill set that he can drop back into coverage every now and again and make some plays. So with that, the Philadelphia Eagles take on the three seed led by Desmond Ritter, who have already done a Falcons rebuild. We know how good Desmond Ritter and the Falcons can be on the sim. This should be a very, very competitive matchup with the NFC Championship game on the line. So let's get into this game. We're just going to sim right through it. It is, you know, I, I do think this is a very important playoff run because if we don't win, um, it's very much one of those situations where our team's not going to be as good if we have to run it back year five as it is right now. Because just salary cap, regression, all that kind of stuff. Like, unless a bunch of guys retire. Oh, thank God. We got one win victory there to start things out. 28-21 over Desmond Ritter and the Atlanta Falcons. But, like, unless we get a couple generous retirements from declining players that free up, like, massive chunks of salary cap, um, this might need to be it. And as you can see here, heated up in the fourth quarter. 14-7. Go ahead, score. Desmond Ritter had a good game. So did Carson Strong. No turnovers for Carson Strong. 197 yards, two touchdowns. Massive game for Miles Sanders. Buck 56, two touchdowns. Quez, just playoff Quez, man. That's what he does. Hassan Riddick, two and a half sacks. We had the interception from the rookie superstar safety, Harold Blair. And just like that, the Philadelphia Eagles are moving on to the NFC Championship game against what I assume is Kyler Murray and the Arizona Cardinals. Kyler Murray, I mean, we literally just rebuilt the Arizona Cardinals. We saw everything that they're about. Uh, he's very good as a dual threat quarterback, but as far as like a game that you need Kyler Murray to go for 300 yards, three, four passing touchdowns, he's not that guy. But you never know with these things, man. He is the home team. The home team could have an advantage here. But as you can see, man, there's a five point overall difference. I think that that should just be constantly weighed and we handle business. It's just quick reflection. That's literally just like, oh, look at this. You're going to the Super Bowl. Here's a reminder that you're in the red for your salary cap and you're going to be absolutely destroyed next season if you don't get it done uh, this year. Let's take a look though at that victory. The Bengals were taking on Joey Burrow. They pretty much handedly beat divisional rival Cleveland Browns 35-14. But look at us, 35-10. A little bit better of a performance and there you go, man. Kyler Murray, we just he can't get into a shootout. Four touchdowns, 300 yards. Did have the pick there for Carson Strong, but absolute elevation. You know, he's been amazing in this rebuild. Dallas Goddard, 124 yards, three touchdowns on 10 catches. They could not cover the tight end. Kobe Dean, leading tackler. We had a sack from Hassan Riddick. No real turnovers, but that sets us up for a Super Bowl matchup. The Eagles, the Bengals. Is this the year? Can we finally put it all together? Take down Joe Burrow. We have the advantage. They're a very good team, but we have that little slight overall advantage. Big offensive advantage. Slight defensive advantage. This should be a Super Bowl. This should be a walk-off. This should be the perfect way to cap off our Madden 22 realistic rebuilds. And for making the Super Bowl, we get to kind of see what our players develop into. And Carson Strong is up to a superstar X-Factor. Why does it get free? It's like Freight Train Schmidt. That has to be... If you are a, a strong arm quarterback, you get the role, regardless of if you're mobile or not, uh, freight train. So we're going to go and give him Gambler, because we're going to hop on the sticks here. Quick draw. We want to give him all the uh, things that give him faster animations and stuff like that. I mean, we're not at home. 
I suppose we'll go clutch in case we are down in the fourth quarter. We'll go gunslinger. And we'll give... Oh, we don't even have the 90 overall yet. But uh, that just kind of shows you how far ahead... I, I'm surprised AJ Brown didn't go up to Superstar. X-Factor. Gonna be honest with you there. On the defensive side, uh, TJ Edwards is up to an X-Factor. So we have three X-Factors. The veteran, Darius Slay, playing the best football of his career. He's up to an X-Factor. Even though you can only have three enabled. We're feeling pretty good. Yeah, we'll go Riddick for the pass rusher. Dean for our cover. Slay there. And we only have, what, two on offense? Yeah. We got Smitty. All right. Uh, let's go win the Super Bowl. Right, let's go, man. I would love to get off to a hot start where we don't have to do anything. But that's probably not. It's not going to be that easy. It's going to be drives that we may need to come in. Opening drive on offense. Yeah, that's a touchdown. Bengals get a field goal. We get a touchdown. Bengals get a touchdown. Actually, next, next time offensively we can come in, uh, I think I'm going to come in. Give me a chance. There we go. We get to go ahead. Touchdown. Go up 21-17. Does. Okay, there we go. Third down and five on the 22. Love that coach calls a nice slate. Actually, let's go mesh. That's our game plan play. And ultimately, it's going to be a nice Quez Watkins play. Let's get Quez involved. Use that 90. He probably has a 99 speed at this point. Send him in motion. Hopefully, get him on a linebacker, which we do. And he just has too much speed. Gets up to the two-yard line. Are we going to be able to punch this in? If he gives us another chance, maybe we can just punch this in with, like, Miles Sanders. Let's go, man. Let's get that go-ahead score here before the fourth quarter. Get the defense. Get them ready. Gets blocked up well right behind Jason Kelsey, who, I mean, again, you're just looking at. We're going year four into year five. He's still here. So, hopefully Cam Jurgens can make that transition to a guard. We have third down. We have another. Was that a turnover? Third and seven. Infield goal range. Can we just take a shot? They have their best guy in Quez, which I don't blame them. But they're leaving A.J. Brown at the top of the screen. Unless Jesse Bates drops back. He's not. Wow. Off the line. A.J. Brown with the go-ahead score. Bengals did not stand a chance on that one. That's just. Oh, my God, man. I can't wait to play with the Eagles. They're going to be so good. So they got a touchdown and a turnover. And just like that, in a matter of seconds, there are, there's literally three touchdowns in the span of like a minute in this game. Holy shit. Okay, we got it. Oh, no. Okay, we got to win it on one play. I think the it's on all pro, so it's very doable. But who knows? Okay, start with that. We just need to get Quez on press man. That's that's honestly the end of the day. Give me Quez. Press someone's up. Look, they're not pressing us. Goddamn. We have 99 throw power, I think. So we can we should be able to make pretty much any. There we go. We need something like that. We need something like that. Huge game from Carson Strong. 400 yards, four touchdowns. We have our timeout, so we can still use the middle of the field. We got press on A.J. Brown. Last time they did this, it was bad. We have kind of almost press on Quez. We're going to put Miles Sanders in pass pro. I don't know what the fuck that was. We're absolutely not running Hail Marys. They don't work. Actually, I hate this play too. I absolutely hate this play. Yeah, no. no chance. All right, we're going to a year five. Defensively, uh, terrible, embarrassing performance. You cannot give up 45 points in the Super Bowl. Point blank, period. Give me all this shit. All right, back to the drawing board. Wasn't Carson Strong's fault. Five touch. Yeah, just fucking what happened, man? What happened? We have like a 90 overall defense. You give up 40. Like, what's the point of having a 90 overall defense if you're going to give up 45 points in the Super Bowl? What's the point? There's no point to having a high overall defense. So we're going into a year five. We were able to re-sign Jordan Davis. We won't be able to keep Avante Maddox, Jake Elliott, Kenny G in the building. But hey, at least we're able to get back Jordan Davis. That's still a big get on the D-line. And still no retirements. Knock on wood for the Philadelphia Eagles. Lane Johnson's still here. Jason Kelsey's still here. Let's go. All right, so for the draft, we're just kind of going to go with best player, best pick available. They're, they're no one's going to play. Um, 
I had a D lineman that I really, really liked, but unfortunately he kind of went off the board. Um, and I mean, again, I don't really know if we need a D lineman, but it really the pick comes down to two players. We have Kyrie Warner where the key ratings don't look amazing, but the combine is about as good as it gets. So it's like, do we want that depth behind, you know, Javon Hargrave, who's getting older? Or we look in the secondary, and we have Lonnie Hales out of USC, who would most likely come to be like corner four. Uh, the con you know what? We'll go with the D-end, uh, D-tackle, sorry. Out of all these ones, I figure, like, we might get a little more reps out of Warner here. I don't know what the dev is going to be, but he should be, you know, my, my hidden dev. Yes, he is. 95 strength. What a monster. And take a look at the draft recap. Absolute hit. Kyrie Warner, 78 hidden dev. Now, not the scheme fit that we're looking for, but really when you're into this point of the rebuild, just kind of getting BPA. Also in the second round, we got Antoine Bernard out of Oregon State, 72 with a hidden dev. Uh, just kind of a you know weird looking player. Speed rusher is currently his top archetype, but he's also very close to being a pass cover guy. So he's do it all for sure. So happy to have a little bit of depth there. Rest of the draft wasn't too bad. We got a 70 normal dev corner in the fourth round. But back to back, that's what you do. That's all you can do. 78, probably the best play. Did we get the number one in true talent? That's what I liked it. I wish they still showed that. Oh, absolutely not. I see an 80 overall running back. Bernard Ash, hidden dev out of South Florida. Where's Hales? I wonder if that guy was up here, the corner. Long oh, he was, 76 with a dev trait as well. Just because it was... For what late drama we might be able to inject here for the fifth draft, the final draft. Guys that are mostly benched. Was this guy going to be beat? Oh, shit. All right, he would have been a superstar. Hopefully our D-tackle is also that. So what is that? I've recorded this rebuild over like three days now. I think we've gone to two Super Bowls and lost two. We're 0-2 in two. Super so this is it. This is our final Eagles roster, year five. O-line is the exact O-line that we started with. Johnson, Jurgens, Kelsey, Dickerson. And my lot of my lot of standing tall there. We'll, we'll just include the boost. 94 overall. Goddard's 91. We have Smitty 97 X Factor. AJ Brown 97 Superstar. Miles Sanders 94 Superstar. Oh Quez still doing the damn thing. And Carson Strong. I did again. I s swear this wasn't like something where I was like, oh, you know what? It's gonna make a good Eagles rebuild if I fuck over Jalen Hurts and make Carson Strong. No, if Jalen, I hoped and I wish Jalen Hurts would have went off. He didn't. I gave Kyrie Strong one season in year two to go off. He did. So it is the, I don't even know, I don't even know if there's a good Carson Strong Eagles jersey picture that I can use in the freaking thumbnail, right? Um, but he was amazing. Up to a superstar X Factor. He has been an absolute gunslinger. Uh, look at those, look at those years. 8-0, 40-9, 38-10, 41-12. Prolific. Prolific. He's getting that little bit of rub. That we've got in our quarterbacks over the last five, six, seven rebuilds or so. For some reason, almost all of our quarterbacks have gone off. Really outside of like Kyler Murray in the Cardinals rebuild. And on the defensive side, okay, we had a retirement. I actually didn't notice Javon Hargrave retired. I did not have an opportunity to, or option to even re-sign him. Must have been a late retirement. That's fine. Because we drafted Warner. I'm glad we did that. Glad We literally were getting ready to draft that superstar corner. I would have been more upset. Warner, even if he's just a star... Uh, that's kind of what we need. You're already an 82 rookie at D-tackle. What a beast. Alongside Jordan Davis. We have three X-Tractor linebackers here. T.J. Edwards, Nicobe, who has regressed kind of a lot here. Uh, Dean and Riddick as our pass rusher. Two superstars, Bradbury and Blair on one side. We have Pierce, who we drafted. Big play, Slay, who just went back up to an X-Factor last offseason. And then Flowers. I mean, again, still an incredibly well-rounded team. Not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be pretty barren in terms of talent because of retirements and salary cap and stuff. And I absolutely think this team here can run it back. Come on, man. The fifth, the, the final rebuild, fifth year. Let me end this with a Super Bowl victory. All right, we're just simming to midseason here. Should be 6-0. and oh. <sighs> There's no way. We got to be able to put it together. I mean, also maybe a fitting way to end the rebuilds for Madden 22. Madden 22, like the lowest meta critic score game of all time. What better way to end and kind of cap off the main channel series with the fact that oh.
a f uh, very fitting. Strong didn't play bad. Running game definitely considerably you know less. Devonte crushed it. I mean, again, like I'm looking at this offense. I assume he made the playoffs. Take a look at the defense. Uh, sacks are fine. I mean, Warner, what's he? Superstar? Just a star, but that's a hell of a year for a rookie. We had four picks, big play, slay. I mean, interceptions. I mean, everything. This looks like a playoff team. This These stats look slightly lower. Slightly lower than the Eagles team that's been going to the Super Bowl. That's been first, second place in the division. Four and 13. 95 overall offense. And we're the second fucking worst team. Lost nine in a row. Went one and eight at home. And that's going to do it for the Madden 22 Realistic Rebuild. I hope you guys did enjoy this series, this journey of all 32 teams. And uh, again, maybe a fitting way. Even though we've, I would say, the last 10 rebuilds we've won, seven or eight have ended up successful with a Super Bowl. But again, I feel like rounding up what is going to go down in history is one of the worst Maddens of all time uh, from uh, you know a fan base perspective, from you know critics, from everything in between. This is probably a fitting way to have it end. So uh, if you guys did enjoy the suffering that it went, took me to go through and rebuild all of these teams, very much would appreciate a thumbs up on the video. Would very much appreciate a subscribe as we start to heat up for Madden 23 season. And uh, that is it, man. There's no other way to spin this. Absolute garbage. And I'll see you guys back here on the next video. Peace out.